Sorry about that. <laughs> Every now and then, the internet gods don't like my network, so I'm going to give this another try, and um, if I have to, I'll just switch to the... Well, anyway, I'll, we'll keep trying until we get this right. So, basically, I was talking about the sacred Mayan um, uh, sacred, sacred ceremonies. These are traditional ceremonies, and these eats candles that ooze eats which are um, these beef tallow candles, are actually sacred calendar candles that are used in the ceremony. But these candles started out as just regular candles that people made because they didn't have the ability to make candles out of other materials. And thank you guys for being patient and, um, and kind of finding me. <laughs> so basically, there was a teacher in... Um, maybe like the 90s, named Carlos Barrios. And he basically started teaching Western people, like me, about making colored candle offerings to the Nawales. And the Nawales are like the, each um, day of the Mayan calendar has um, like a, an animal associated with it. And so the Nawales are like the spirits that connect to these animals. And so, um, when you um, make these um, like spiritual offerings to these calendar days, um, you can basically, you're working with um, a colored candle to ask for a specific type of thing. So in this sense, it's a little bit like folk magic. You haven't quite gotten to folk magic yet, but you're getting in that direction because anyone in the, in the culture can do it. I can do it. So for example, these colors are set up not only for the four directions, but they're also set up for specific types of jobs, like pink. Pink is a color for women and girls. So there's a day in the Mayan calendar called Ish, which is the jaguar. And on this day, you can pray for water, nature, but also women, because the jaguar is connected to women. So you might light pink candles on Ish days to pray for a woman's health problem or to pray that little girls grow up strong and powerful. So that's like a way of basically connecting the color of the candle to um, the magic of that day sign. And these are traditional offerings that some Maya people do. I had enough stuff going on lately, don't need internet going yet. Yeah, really, <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's like a very Mercury and retrograde thing. So now finally we're gonna get to some real folk magic. In the Yucatan, there is um, a tradition, a very strong tradition of curanderismo. And in this tradition, it's very powerful to use candles in a magical working. So for example, just as a straight up offering to the ancestors, fire from the wick of the candles are still believed by many to be both an offering and an act as a portal for our ancestors. And that's a quote from Erica Buenaflor, who I'm gonna be talking about a little later. Um, she teaches curanderismo. And one of the traditions, which I have not worked with, but um, I'm getting ready to, is a tradition called the Velacion, which is basically an offering that is made, it's like a magical working that's done over a period of days. It's a little bit like a novena. And the center of it is basically a votive candle. This one is Santa Corona. I burned this one for the uh, pandemic because she's the patron saint of um, protection from pandemics. At least some people work with her that way. But for example, like the Virgin of Guadalupe, I burn those candles sometimes. And in that kind of velacion, you might be praying for an end to arguments. So, um, and so I'm gonna talk a little bit about how a velacion is set up. So basically in a velacion, um, there are colored candles that surround the, um, the main votive candle. And there's also a small offering of water in a glass and an egg yolk in a glass. And I'm gonna show you, if you don't mind me showing you a book, a little bit about how this works. So here's a diagram of the Velacion. And inside this box is the votive candle, the water, and the egg. And then in this one, the pattern of the candles is a triangle, which kind of has an energy to speed things up. 
And this, these candles would be, the colors of the candles mean something. It has significance. And I'm going to talk about that and also a little bit about how you read the central candle in a minute. So basically, let me see here, such beautiful rituals and traditions. Yes, yes, yes. Have we got a candle that will keep people off your property? That's awesome. I'm going to look for that. That's great. I mean, protection is like a huge part of all these traditions, so I'm sure there is. Um, so the candle, um, the candle colors that surround the votive, which would be like the triangle in that diagram I just showed you, the colors have significance. So for example, you're doing um, a working about um, arguments. You might use pink for goodwill, or you might use purple to dispel dense energies. Um, if you were working on um, a health issue, you would use red. Blue is for serenity, white purifies, that's pretty standard. Black brings closure. And what's interesting is in both the Mayan and Andean traditions, green is the color that, like, the negative spirits don't like green. And when I talk about the um, Andean traditions, you're going to notice, you're going to hear the same exact thing. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about reading the central candle because that's the really important part. The central candle, like in many candle burning traditions, and this is where, this is like a traditional candle burning, the central candle tells you what's happening. How are things going? And so basically what you want to look at is if there's black smoke, that means purification is happening. If there's a strong flame, like in many candle traditions, that's good. This is something that's a little bit like the Andean one. You're looking for candle hissing or popping or like a cracking sound. That is a message that there are foreign energies that are negative. It could be psychic attack or it could just be trouble from other sources, but it's like an outside unhappy influence that's coming in. If the candle goes out, that means there's like actual resistance. So those are like all different ways to kind of monitor the magic while you're doing it. I have been using black candles lately. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, black candles are a part of what I'm going to talk about today. So cool. I'd love to hear about that. Wow, that's interesting. Red candles for health. I suppose that means strength and vitality. Yeah, I think that is. Sometimes it also means blood. Because in some traditions, blood is like a really powerful symbol. But yeah. So now I'm going to switch gears. And I'm going to move on to Ecuadorian Andean Corinderismo. Now these traditions I have a lot of experience with. Because um, Itzhak Biri teaches these. There's a wonderful book called, um, let me show you this book real quick. I'm not giving this one away, but it's easy to get. It's called Shamanic Healing. Really easy to get. Great book. And um, just one moment here. But I've done these many, many times. These are basically like a mini limpia. So they're like a cleansing. Um, and these comes from straight from actual Andean and Amazon traditions. Um, in Ecuador, the bird shamans, the yachaks, are the ones who, who taught Itzhak Biri this tradition. So what you're working with, at least to do a reading, which is what we're going to talk about first, because this is divination or offerings, is you're working with a white beeswax candle. Now in most traditions that I'm going to talk about today, that's the traditional offering. But the good news is you don't have to use a white bees, beeswax candle. I've had really good results with tea lights and with birthday candles. But this is traditional and it probably is the most powerful. So um, I've been able to get um, beeswax candles from Need Fire Wellness. But wherever you can get them, you know, great. Or if you can make your own, fabulous. So what you're going to do with this beeswax candle is you're taking it and you're handing it to the patient. You're, as the practitioner, are always touching the base of the candle. They're holding the base of the candle. So when they do the actual brushing of their body, which they're going to brush everywhere on their body, you're not touching it. And when they hand it back to you, you grab it by the base so that your hands never come into contact with the heavy energy that they've picked up on their bodies. That's important. What they're also going to be doing is after they get done brushing themselves off, they're going to blow three times into the candle. 
once for their body, once for their emotions, and once for their spirit. Then they hand it to you. Now basically the healer holds the candle at the base and he lights or she lights the candle. And then you start to read the candle. And this is where the really interesting stuff comes in. So I'm gonna take a break and see if I can read some of this. I had a strong flame and then a lot of popping, about an inch burned out. I dressed it at Sage, I get around here. I never saw a can burn so fast. I've got to go, oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, popping is kind of like, for me, like that's one of the things I look for. I look for two things, wax boiling over, which I'll get to in a minute, and popping. Everything else is like fine tuning. There's a lot of different interpretations you can go into. And because this is a, I'll get to the physical healing part later, but um, right now you're doing the divination. So the first thing you can do is you can look at the color of the, of the candle flame. If you're doing a healing work with somebody and you, they hand you that candle and the candle has a lot of blue in the flame, that's good in this system because it means their ancestors are protecting them, which means they're probably, if they're not healthy, they've got a lot of good energy around them. So that's a good thing. Colors you don't want to see would be like a reddish color, green, which means envy, um, black spots in the candle flame. And sometimes you have to put your hand behind the candle flame to see these colors. The other thing you can do is you can journey into the candle flame. Um, this is where basically you're using the candle as a portal into the other world. And while you go in there, you can see their past, their present, their future. You can see if they have had soul loss or if they need an extraction, which would be where someone sent them bad energy or maybe an entity is connected to them, which can be either a ghost or it could be something that's never been human. So after this is burned completely, you take what is left of the candle and you bury it with a prayer into the ground and you're giving it to Pachamama. So this ceremony, this basic ceremony is going to be repeated again in the next session, part of my talk where I'm talking about actual spirit and soul healing and shamanic embodiment. So we're now we're getting kind of away from reading and we're getting more into actual healing work. I've been calling the ancestors I inherit property from. That's cool. That's good. Yeah, as long as they're well ancestors, that should be good. That would, that, that's what I would do. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about are, are these traditional fire ceremonies that use candles. These are taught in both by teachers who study with Andean teachers and also with um, Huichol teachers. These are fire ceremonies that are used um, because in the Andes, a sacred fire is um, a fuego sagrado. And in order to do this, you make the fire friendly, as I mentioned earlier, by offering it like a little piece of sage or some olive oil or just something. Something to kind of make the fire turn from a fire into a being. And then you're talking to um, Mama Nina, which is uh, mother fire or um, grandfather fire in the Huichol tradition. Candle magic is what I'm naturally drawn to. Very cool. I love candle magic. Yeah, that's, yeah, I do too. <laughs> that's wonderful. And I hope that some of this adds to what you're already doing. And I would love to hear about what you're doing. Um, these, what will happen when the fire becomes friendly, when it becomes a being, is that the color will change or the energy changes, like there's a presence there. These are done at the full moon, surprise, surprise. And um, basically, you can use these in an ancestral healing. Um, basically, if you know there's a lot of trouble on your family lines, which there was for me, you can burn one of these candles and as you're offering these offerings um, to the flame, you're sending prayers out to the well ancestors so that they will help the ones that need help. They will have the fuel to do that work. So you can actually strengthen your ancestral lines this way. Um, and it's, it's a very, it's a, like even traditional teachers will teach their students to do this because they understand that we don't all have fireplaces or fire pits or a backyard where we can have a, a fire or the woods where we can go to and ha have a fire. Um, this can also release blocks. This is a great um, ceremony to, so does the dance of the flame? Yes, yes, the, the movement of the flame can tell you that too. It's almost like it comes with a presence. There's something about it that's different. Yeah, absolutely. 
Now, the other thing I've used this for is that fire is like an ancestor. And so James Andretti, who's with Joel, he uses it if you want to change a bad habit. So, for example, let's say you have um, a... Um, Let's say you have a um, a habit, that you, like an energy leak in your life. It can be like a lot of different things. Like, you know, sometimes I work about money or my health, um, codependency, you know, anything. So you offer gifts to the fire to make it friendly. And then you, you just talk to Grandfather Fire. And you make plans to behave differently. And you, like, really feel the way the, the bad habit feels. And then you feel how great it would be to have the new ha habit, you know, in place. And the fire becomes like a like an ally and a witness, and it kind of holds you to it in a way. It creates like like an energy of accountability that's actually supportive. Um, and I've actually I've had really cool things happen this way for me. Um, and one of the things he says is, energetic healing can be a time-consuming and challenging process, with both successes and failures. This is the main reason to go to the sacred fire, and feel the numinous energy throughout your whole being. You can gain strength from this ancient energy and to continue on your path. So, yeah, I mean, like, codependency, it's really good for. Mine was straight up and full. Oh, that's awesome. That's good. Yeah, like, if it just burns like crazy. Also, sometimes a fast burning can mean powerful work is being done. Oh, I'm glad that was helpful. That's wonderful. Because so many of you already do candle magic, so it's really cool to see how this meshes with, you know, what you're already doing. All right, so let's move on to, okay, so now I'm going back to the uh, the Ecuadorian yachak work that I talked about with these beeswax candles. So today what I'm going to talk about is doing this as a, just as a practice. Candle cleansing is actually a form of limpia, which is like an extraction. So there's three different levels of limpia. There's, um, these can be used to remove stress and heavy energy. They can be used to remove entities, or they can be even used in a partial possession or a possession situation. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit what this looks like. I'm using green because green is a color that the negative spirits don't like. So green is used in a situation where maybe you think you've picked up some foreign energy like an entity or something like that it doesn't feel good it's like stuck to you this can happen to people who do healing work or if you're very empathic and it happens all the time it also helps clear cords the people who love you make cord to you and you don't they don't even know they're doing it and it's just unconscious so basically what you want to do is you just want to brush brush yourself off brush all of you every part of your body and you're just very thorough and you're actually touching your skin, you know, touching your hands. You know, getting this heavy energy off of your body. Okay, now blow into it three times. Body, heart, soul. Okay, now you're good to go. You just place it and then light the candle. And you let it burn completely. Now, the beautiful thing about using birthday candles, even though they're not traditional, is that they burn very quickly. So you can, like, get on to other things. And um, this is very helpful because there's many times where I've done this not just for myself but for others after they've picked up something. Because, I, you know, m many of us are empathic. And so, um, you know, it's just a good, really simple way of working with this. Good, I will use green too. I use it for Friday's romance. I do the same thing. That's really cool. Yeah. So, what are the colors? That, that's the basic ceremony. Um, then, if you do... Now, um, there's going to be a few changes, but, I'll, but that's basically what it is. So, white, white candles are used for stress. Like, just everyday stress. You know... You, somebody looks at you weird at the grocery store or something, you know, that kind of thing, you know, cords, stuff like that, just to keep you, you keep yourself clear. And if you want, you can um, uh, open a window if you can do that. Some people live in a place where it's just not convenient, it's too cold, too hot, but if you can, open a window. 
then uh, if you don't want to burn it down 